by Ann Schumann Swain about the exploring the impact of peer-to-peer -peer interactions on learning and course performance in an online environment. Hi, everyone. Uh, Hi. Can you see my screen? Yes, perfect. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Anshuman. Um, and today I'm going to talk about uh, a small side project of mine, uh, which is looking at exploring the impact of peer-to-peer -peer interactions on learning and course performance in an online environment. This work was done um, in collaboration with Marcia Schaffner and Gilly Marbachard, both from University of Maryland. Um, so I am originally a PhD candidate in Department of Biology. I work on ecology and evolution. Uh, but I'm very interested in teaching, so I, I so I had designed a couple of courses, even though I was the TI, I told the instructor that I want to. One of them was this online course, uh, which was launched in 2018. So this is way before the pandemic and everything. Um, so this, this uh, is basically some analysis of data from those course. So before I begin, I want to show you a basic overview of how we'll be proceeding through this. So first I am going to talk about the background idea, why are we doing this and what past work has focused on and how is our work special? Um, the, the second part I'll go over the data collection, what methods we are using and what kind of statistics we are using to forge our conclusions. And then we go on to the results and uh, some contextualization of the results and some general observations. So let's start with uh, why do we want to do this? Uh, so initially, I, I was not going to do this project. It just came uh, um, into my mind once when I was going through this um, paper, uh, which came out very recently about student satisfaction with online course materials before and after they moved to remote uh, instruction. This is specifically in context of COVID. So these were courses which were moved online. Uh, and this was a survey of students all across United States. So again, this has no data from Europe or rest of the world, but um, they had a large number of students. And as you could see that a lot of students started becoming very dissatisfied with the online version of their course. The second thing is people were uh, dissatisfied differentially about different things, um, about whether it is their expectations from the course or whether it's about peer interactions and working together. So after seeing all of these, I decided, well, we had designed an online course uh, for specifically for ecology and evolution. And um, I started looking for things where people might have studied uh, such courses. Uh, but most of the past work I found, a lot of them focused on uh, the massive online courses, right? Like Coursera, like, um, I don't know, like uh, bigger platforms basically um, where more data is available and you can directly mine data from them. Uh, secondly, most of them were intro courses or were telling about slightly less technical uh, aspects of fields, which are easier to disseminate on say larger platforms or to a larger number of students online. And the third thing I found was ecology evolution related courses were less represented among these courses. The ones which were there were very, very introductory. Um, so what is special about our work then? So first is it's focused on ecology. Um, and second, it, uh, second is it's uh, intermediate to advanced level courses. So we do, we have discussions of research papers um, every week and um, we, do discussions about them. I'll come to the structure of the course really quickly. Um, and uh, the third is this was actually designed well before the pandemic hit where people had to transfer their courses online. So it was not like we had to do it, but we decided to do it well before. Um, and the data is uh, spanned across four different semesters. So it's, it's a medium sized course. So it's 25 students approximately in each uh, semester and the data is from four different semesters. So this brings us to the data. And um, this course was called Principles of Ecology. Uh, and as I said, this uh, I have data from 
four semesters of this intensive course with an average of 20 to 24 to 27 students each semester. And just for sake of um, having uniformity, we had the same course instructor and the TA. So I was the TA for all the four semesters and the course instructor was also the same. We also had the exactly same course structure so that we could actually compare and um, do the analysis. Uh, so the so the course was online and was asynchronous and consisted of 10 research paper based discussions, weekly chapter assignments, three exams and a term paper. So how this works is they were assigned a, a paper. So this paper was against the uh, same across all the four semesters. Um, and how I'm uh, dividing sets of discussions were like the discussions which were before a specific exam. So this was, and all the things which are in those discussions come in, in the exam, say, say discussions S1 uh, pertain to content which comes in exam one and so on. Um, and the term paper is basically, they have to select some, um, some specific portion of dis discussions where they which they liked and they have to write a review paper or original research based on it. So it was a, it's a, it's a pretty advanced course. Um, so they had to kind of synthesize the information they got throughout this course. Uh, so based on, so, so the discussions were online where they were kind of posting their thoughts and questions and they could reply to each other. So it was an interactive environment. So based on these discussion posts, replies, we constructed a directed weighted interaction network for each discussion, where each node was an individual and a link implied interaction, which is basically the replied to somebody's comment or question. Um, and the weight of each link denotes the number of interactions, basically. Uh, we also built an undirected weighted semantic network based on uh, content similarity. So basically we mined the words and did some basic text mining operations. Um, we then compared these networks using simple node level and network level statistics. So I started doing this project very recently and then I saw Massimo's tweet about uh, this conference. So I just came in. So it might not be as spectacular as some of the previous talks, which are all like amazing, but I thought this would be interesting to see. So in addition to this, we also create combined networks for each of the set of discussions. So discussion S1 had one network, S2 had one and so on. And we also uh, got uh, learning style uh, data for each individual. So this was done in a pre-course survey. And also we had data about where they began. So we had a questionnaire of basic ecology concepts and where people stand, just again for reference. Um, so with that, let's uh, jump right into the results. Uh, what we found uh, was, so these are different discussions on the x-axis and the, the degree of uh, nodes on, on the y-axis. What we found was initially there was a lot of um, replies and reply to threads among students. Um, and this would, maybe you can, you can think of this as initially they were interacting with more people, but as the course progressed, they started interacting with less and less people. But there's another story to it. It is that weights, which is the number of uh, replies they were giving or number of times they were interacting with each other actually increased and stayed constant. So what was basically happening was they were interacting, uh, first it increased and then it decreased. But during the decrease phase, they were interacting with lesser people, but were interacting more often with them. So they were forming their kind of own clusters where they were discussing more. Um, the next thing which we saw was we, matched whether there was a, a relation between the change in degree and the change in grade. And for that we, you, and this grade is for, um, for, for the exam. So these are the collated discussion networks. And we are comparing T plus one to T only. There is no reverse. Uh, so, so we are comparing only um, change in grade between exam and the subsequent exam. And what we found was if there is a positive change in degree, there is, a, there is a significant positive correlation with a better grade. So there was a positive change in grade. Whereas if there was a reduction in degree, uh, we did not see any significant uh, effects on whether it increased or decreased their grade. So which means uh, that um, whenever there was increased participation in a specific uh, time period, um, uh, students' performance increased 
but when it uh, when the when the interactions decrease it did not necessarily translate into a decrease in performance uh, which i thought was interesting uh, but when you look at the same thing using weight which is the total number of interaction um, it was a scatter but as you as you saw there before the total interactions always increased with the timeline of the course so there are more red points here um but again there was no no correlation whatsoever um so so this was very interesting for me because uh, whenever we used to talk to students um and students would say just just out of hand they will be like ah oh, yeah i i posted more and i thought that was interesting um and in the same exam those people would do better so this actually led us to kind of formalize this question and uh, look at it from this perspective uh the next is if if we take the interaction so the, the top uh, figure is telling about the total number of interactions in different discussions uh, numbered 1 to 10 and courses are the four different semesters what we saw was that the final term project papers which these students submitted were actually somehow mirroring how interested the whole the class as a whole was interested in each of the discussions this was a pretty interesting find because uh, it was not the same discussions which interested each course uh, like each semester um but they were kind of mirroring it so what this was telling us kind of uh, was if you can garner interest among students by incentivizing certain discussions they actually prefer to do a project in that specific discussion so you are basically tilting the balance towards what they are going to like or not which i think is a very important um aspect as a as a instructor or a ta so this is basically the same thing if you uh, plot the projects the number of projects in a given topic area versus the number of interactions in that topic area so you kind of see a scattered rise um in this case um again this was this was a smaller scale study so i don't know how it would scale across but again because i did not find a lot of uh advanced ecology courses which were doing this so uh, we wanted to see whether uh whether how much interactions are there in a given discussion or, or, or for a given topic influences people's uh future actions about saying whether they they like that topic or not and most of the people who like the topic would um, would prefer to do a project on that specific topic uh next what we saw was so so for one of the semesters um they were doing groups so we actually formed groups the previous semesters uh, they worked individually on their terms papers and the last um semester which was this summer we made them form groups and what we found that uh, now if you take each pair of individuals and see what is the total number of interactions between them um versus uh, whether they were in the same group or not so in group probability means probability of them being in the same group what we see is that the more they interacted um maybe this graph is not very clear because the upper frequency is so small that it kind of goes but what you basically see is this is this is a kind of a logistic uh, regression where you see that the, the probability rises with um increase in the total number of interactions so what this is saying is the more you interact with a person the higher probability you have in forming a group with that particular person uh towards working Uh, on a term paper project which kind of seems trivial but uh, this is kind of a definitive look at it where you can see the data shows you that they form up and we also collected data about uh, the learning styles um so this is by nc state university where they have this website where you can take a, a long form survey and it kind of tells you uh, what kind of uh, learning style you have uh and what we found was uh there was normalized uh, if you if you take the normalized performance uh in those term papers versus the learning diversity so learning diversity is defined as um the sum of uh distances so this is mod distances uh, um l1 norms uh distances of the uh, four different categories and what we found that the more diverse a group is um the the better it performed so this was again something we talk about 
but there was no explicit way I had ever seen this in ecology evolution courses. So this was very interesting again for me as well as the instructor uh, to, to actually give us an incentive to make more diverse groups so that they can actually, so these were, they, they formed their own groups. So this one, we did not do anything. So that is another interesting uh, observation. So in, in, in short, what we found, uh, uh, this was a very small uh, scale project, but the number of people that one individual interacted with uh, initially increased and then decreased since the interaction became more specific to a smaller subset of population uh, of the students uh, and in increase the interactions and aggregated discussion networks led to better performance in exam, but a decrease necessarily did not mean a decrease in performance. The term paper content of each course was heavily dependent on the discussion interactions of that course. And individuals with higher discussion weights among each other tended to form working groups for term papers. And finally, that working groups with the higher diversity in learning styles performed better in, in term paper projects. Uh, in future, I want to work further on this data, explore more network statistics, and specifically look at link and group prediction. So with that, I would take any questions. Okay, thank you. Let's thank the speaker. Let's see, there are a few questions on the chat. Um, so let's see. There is a technical question mm -hmm. about whether or not this was online or... Um, Uh, so are students' discussions online or offline? Uh, they're all online. They're online, but they're asynchronous, but they're given a specific time, like within this day they have to do, and they get a notification whenever somebody replies on their post or something. So they they can engage with it uh, actively. And this, this was uh, deployed in 2018 winter. So it's kind of uh, structured and remained the same. So we did not do it in a hurry. So it was all tried and tested. So... I see. So there is also a comment by Elena Stasevich mm -hmm. um, uh, who says that there might be interesting connections to virtual teamwork research from uh, Handke uh, research. This is on the chat. You might check the details later. Mm -hmm. Then there is also another remark uh, by Ismo. Mm -hmm. um, the results are interesting uh, and we also looked at interaction activity in lab works. So I encourage maybe for you to exchange emails or like to get in touch uh, uh, because this is quite interesting research. I do know also that there is a very rich literature about uh, team success in research, not just in, in educational um, landscapes. Mm -hmm. But uh, what, I, what I remember is that there is usually a, a sweet spot. Like you need to have a few diverse people for achieving more success in publications, in achieving better publications. But the problem is that if you lead to two diverse people, this is actually detrimental. And I think we have also here people that are way more expert than me on this. Yeah, I mean, I'm not an expert. I, I, no, I do not do this research. I just, I just yeah. remembered this, this research. I don't know if there is anybody that wants to say something. No? Okay. Well. Thank you so much, Shuman, for the talk. It was very interesting. Let's thank the speaker once again. Okay. And